Matthew here, and I have been getting some questions again about what I'm using to shoot Raf's kitchen with. It looks a little different. Am I using different camera gear? And if you have been asking that question, you are correct. I'm using a few different things. So yeah, I'm just shooting here in Indonesia for a while. I'm in a just a hotel in the airport in Jakarta right now. But I do have all my gear here, so we're gonna do a quick run through of everything, um, everything that I'm using in my kit, especially kind of a slimmed down version because I, I packed quite light this time. But number one, the thing that I'm using to shoot with right now is the newest iPhone, iPhone 13, I think it is. Maybe there's a newer one by now, but I got it uh, last year. And people ask me, hey, what camera should I get if I wanna start vlogging? I say, don't get a camera, don't bother getting what any established youtuber does just get an iphone it's so good they got three lenses portrait mode slow motion out of the box color is really great even audio you don't even need a microphone just start with that so anyway iphone is great but let's get into the rest of the gear so yeah we got everything on the bed here jakarta airport hotel not really a whole lot going on but you can see airplanes but the important thing is the gear. So the newest thing on the menu is this, the GH6. So I've been using the GH series for a long time, since the GH3. Almost everything you've seen on Ras Kitchen for, I don't know, since 2018 has been on the GH4. But last year I did upgrade to the 6. So it's a really great camera. Uh, the autofocus is still questionable. It doesn't seem as good as some full frame ones, but you know, if you have it set correctly, make sure you have it set to that little C there and it should hold the focus much better. And I, I do still find it's an, an improvement. So the main thing that I really like about this camera is as you know, I like to shoot a lot of slow motion. Now, previously on the GH4, it did have slow motion, but it was over cranked, so you wouldn't get audio. And the quality was actually not always as good if there was a lot of detail in the shot, and it only did it at 1080p. But with this camera, it actually shoots in 4K at 120 frames a second. So I'm not able to slow it down as much but I've been moving the camera a little slower and getting the same effect, but keeping the quality. So I really, really like it for that effect. Uh, the stabilization is still really good. It's even better in low light than before. And it's kind of a similar setup within the menu. So I, I don't know, I'm a creature of habit when it comes to equipment. Once I figure it out, which takes me a while, I like to stick with that just because I know what I'm doing and I know how to get it to look how I like it. So there's a few gripes I have with it too, which maybe I'll get into one day, but I, I do really enjoy this type of camera. But again, like I said, if you're starting out, don't bother spending the money on this, uh, just get an iPhone. So that is the camera. Now on the lens here, I've had this 12 by 60 for quite a while. So I do use this if you need a bunch of variety of shots and need to be able to zoom in. It's a a manual zoom but it still does the trick anyway which is just fine and I, I'll do a lot of my b-roll on that sometimes if I want a little more of a cinematic look I will use it as well but probably most of the stuff that you see is this one here and I know a lot of other YouTube creators use it like Mark Weens for example this 8x18 so it has the internal stabilization as well and it's very wide so you can easily hold the camera in your hand and shoot back at yourself and get your whole big old head in frame and have it look good. Or you can use it in tight situations, like if you're in a small room or a small kitchen, like at Moko's place, you can still fit a lot of the things in the room in the shot just because it's so nice and wide. So it does zoom a bit as well. So same thing, it's got a manual, um, ooh, manual, zoom well it doesn't even really show but anyway that's i probably use that lens more than the 12 by 60 these days all right next i have had this for a while also this is the lumix 42.5 so a beautiful portrait lens 
it has a really, really quick speed. It's, uh, what does it go down to? 1.2, so that's super fast, really good in low light. So I'll especially use this in the evenings. If I want some really good looking B-roll or really good portraits, this is the one that I'm gonna use. And same thing, it does also have internal stabilization. So very important when you're doing video. I'm not much of a photo guy, but uh, for video, you want that power OIS. So the body has it, the lens has it, and it just makes everything twice as stable. Now this one, I don't know if I talked about this before. I had a cheaper 300 mil lens and it looked okay, but I buckled down and did spend the money on this one. It's probably the most expensive lens I have by a lot, but it's the 100 by 400. And again, same thing. You can see it has stabilization and obviously it is a huge zoomer. So nature shots amazing i've been filming some surfing here in sumatra it's been going really well so i'm always trying to reinvest a little bit and I, I i did spend a few years with a cheaper long lens but i'm really happy to have this in the kit now and i definitely use it a lot and it's just fantastic especially when you're far away and you see something cool in the woods like a crazy bird or a lizard or a surfer that's way the hell out there uh, really really enjoy this lens so I will link everything below so if you want to buy these um, please do use my Amazon link the price is the same for you it's the best price that I found if you buy through the link I get a small commission and would really appreciate it if you end up using any of this stuff so that is the lens setup for audio I've been using this mic and I find it excellent as well. This is the Shure Lens Hopper, and it's got a few different settings. You can boost the audio. You can do like a kind of a, is it low pass filter, high pass filter? It's just very light. The thing I like about this lens the most is that it just takes a regular AA battery. You don't need any fancy different battery for it. So I can just use a rechargeable, and it's got the hot shoe mount. So it does just fit in the top here and plugs in very easily to the mic input right there. So I find the audio is pretty damn good. And even when I'm talking behind the camera, it captures a relatively clear sound. So I definitely enjoy that. Uh, this is a pretty important piece of gear. I did talk about this before. This is the Low Pro. Where's the name on it? Somewhere. I think the name's on the back. Fast Pack. So I really, really like this bag. I can fit the long lens in here. I fit one lens sitting on the camera and then I have my other two lenses right there. I have all my extra batteries and stuff. I carry all my filters. It's even got a zipper here for if you have, I don't know, books or documents or an iPad, you can have that there. And if I want to fit my drone, which we'll get into in a second there, I can actually fit the drone in on top of the long lens right in here. So it's very small, but surprisingly it fits a hell of a lot of stuff. So I'm really digging this one. That's my main, main camera bag for, for hiking. It comes with a like rain raincoat thing on here so if you're hiking in the woods as i tend to do or in the rainforest you can use that and yeah i just spilled a whole bunch of batteries everywhere but i can't say it enough bring extra batteries and buy the good batteries it's not worth it trying to save on these cheap no-name batteries uh, the batteries for this camera were actually more expensive than the other ones and they made them a different shape which was kind of annoying but i do find the battery life lasts really well and uh, I carry at least four or five with me, and that's usually fine. Oh, one thing about the camera I did forget is it does take a different type of card. So this camera, all the other cameras I use used to take SD card, but look at this one. This one takes a CF Express and an SD. So I don't even end up using the SD anymore. Look at this. 
I can fit it on a 256 gig card super fast and it's crazy fast transfer speed. So when I used to dump footage, it would take ages and I'd be having my computer chugging away for half an hour, 45 minutes. This just blasts off footage to the laptop super fast, which we'll get into in a second. But I love this system. I don't need an external card drive like you do on some fancier cameras. And, you know, again, it's a little more expensive, but camera gear, you know, it's worth it. It just fits in right like that. Boom. Super nice. Okay, I made a bit of a mess here, but that's okay. We're moving on to the drone. So this is the same drone that I've had since 2020. Uh, Ratty has been flying it many, many times. He knows how to fly it very easily. It's very compact. Like I said, I can actually just fit it right in there. Even though it doesn't look like it, it fits right inside on top of that lens. Very light. And it's the Mavic DJ... No, oh, DJA... DJI Mavic 2 Zoom. So it came out in about 2020 and I'm still loving it. So again, you wanna have two batteries at least because the flight time varies. It's usually about 26, 27 minutes flight time. You give yourself four or five minutes leeway to get the thing back so it's not crashing in the ocean or wherever. And they're very easy to charge up. I find they charge very quickly. So big up DJI, the technology is amazing. Now. Something you may want to consider, and I'm actually considering selling this one to get the bigger uh, or newer drone. I think it's the DJI Mavic 3 Zoom. But I'm also considering getting a Mavic Mini because depending on where you live, for example, I live in Canada, there's all kinds of requirements to fly these things. You need permits, you need to get a license, you need to even go through training. So I've never even flown a drone in Canada before. However, if you have a drone that is less than 250 grams, you can get away from all that and fly your drone quite easily. Now, guess what? Mavic makes a DJI Mini that weighs in at 249 grams. So how smart is that? Make it one gram below the legal limit and you're a lot more flexible with your drone. And from what I understand, the quality is still really good. So you might see me with the Mini soon and I might still upgrade to the big one when I'm going to countries like Indonesia or Jamaica that have much more relaxed rules with this kind of thing. Yeah, you got the drone, the two batteries, you've got the controller, and it connects to your phone, whatever kind of phone you have, you use as the monitor. You can go real far with it. I mean, I fly at a couple K away regularly. Most countries have limits of around, you know, 120 meters, 150 meters with height, but it goes a lot higher than that. And your charger, and one thing I do as well, I've been putting filters on it. I usually, oh, frick, there's sand in there. That's not ideal. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, filters. Filters are good. I pretty much always have an ND filter on there because the highlights get really blown out. These are quite cheap on Amazon as well. I forget what brand these are, but I'll, I'll list it below. Freewell. They're very high quality. So highly recommended. I always do carry some extra propellers. They're very cheap and easy to replace. And uh, yeah, sometimes they they blow out, especially if you hit something. So these are these old ones I'm using or the new ones? Anyway, always have some extra propellers because you don't want to get stuck without, without your propellers because, well, you're not flying anywhere in that case. All right, so next up is the GoPro. I hardly use my Hero 8 anymore. This is the GoPro Max 360. Now, some people love it, some people hate it. I think it's amazing when I'm doing skateboarding or, or things like that, it's almost like you have your own videographer because you choose the shot after, it just captures everything in 360. So I find it incredible. I think the thing that people don't like is when it gets left in too much of a fisheye look when it's edited because you can pull as wide as you want and have it look like you're a little ant on a globe kind of thing and you can get some really weird looks but if you're editing it properly you can actually get some very normal looking kind of wide angle looks so it's more the editing not even the camera the other thing too is that when you shoot in 360 you can watch it on things like oculus the facebook oculus or meta oculus 
And even when I upload it on YouTube, I do a 360 and an edited version. The 360 version, you can just move your phone around and see the whole thing 360. So I think it's really cool technology. I still like doing both. This thing just takes SD cards. It is waterproof. It doesn't work underwater because the shape of the lens is round, but I did shoot some really cool surfing stuff with this recently here in Indo and it turned out pretty cool on the end of the board and you can get all kinds of different looks and a different look than the regular GoPro on the board. So I love this 360 cam. Uh, this is the first iteration of it. I hope they're coming out with a GoPro Max 2 sometime this year in 2023, but fingers crossed. And something that you'll want, especially with what I do, is a lens protector. Now you can see there's a ding. Is that a ding on the lens? Oh, it is a ding. See, could have dinged the regular glass lens and I'd be screwed, but I always carry extras of these. Now they kind of charge a dumb amount of money considering it's just a bit of plastic, but it's highly worth it because you don't want to replace your whole camera and better to have these on if you're filming something where your camera can get knocked. And quick pro tip, I highly recommend the GoPro editor or not the GoPro editor, the GoPro membership. I think it's like six bucks a month or something like that. If you damage your GoPro, they replace it for a hundred bucks. I'm pretty sure that's the amount. I scratched my lens. They said, oh no, we don't replace the lens. However, you can send it back. And if you pay the hundred bucks, you get a new camera. So I straight up got a whole on other camera because I had scratched the lens. I think I left it on some rocks in a riverbed in Jamaica when Ratty and I were fishing. So that's why you carry the lens protectors, but you can get that GoPro membership. Not only does it do that, but you get a, a membership to the cloud so that all of your GoPro footage that you edit on your phone, the phone has an amazing editor where you can edit this 360 footage so quickly. I'm gonna do a tutorial on that one day because it's really cool and, and I think it's so helpful as a, uh, a filmmaker, or video creator, or whatever. It's just amazing what you can do with a phone and a GoPro these days. So yeah, that is the, the hero. You know, there's a bunch of other accessories like the selfie stick I'm holding, which I'll show in a second. And, uh, and all the different mounts and all that and blah, blah, blah. But basic GoPro stuff, you can figure it out. We'll link that one below too. Telson selfie stick. It's got the kind of GoPro style head, but I can interchange this to fit the 360 camera on it. And I'm gonna use my foot here. Ha, super extendable. Very light, carbon fiber, great price. And the selfie stick, when you use the 360 camera, becomes invisible. So, you know, cinema magic right there. Another reason why I like the 360. So that's it. And now for editing stuff. So, you know, this is what I like. I use Mac. It's a power book or whatever they call it. I've been using them for years. I mean, use whatever you want. I just find this chugs away so good on 4K footage. It just handles it so easily. No nonsense, no proxy files. You know, if you have a slow computer, it's going to be a grind editing it. And this just goes through it like butter. So it was worth it. And I use generally these lacy hard drives. Got this awesome sticker at the, the little convenience store here the other day, like an unregulated Harley Davidson <laughs> American Eagle thing. Uh, these are really tough four gigabyte hard drives. And yeah, I, I've been using them for years. I always carry two because I'm traveling light. I've been using these ones as well. These are solid state drives. So these ones are great as well, just more expensive. And these are only one terabyte, but look how small they are and they're not spinning around. So they're super light and good to travel with. So once they start making these in bigger amounts, I'll use them everywhere, but um, I'll usually bring two of these generally. And then this is the CF card reader that I was talking about that makes it so fast to edit all your footage. Shake, chunt, shake, chunt. Love it, mine. So, so quick, saves your time. Time is money. Use CF cards if you can, and it'll help you get your videos done that much quicker. I have an SD card reader here too, USB thing hub if I need to convert anything. So micro SD like the GoPro, SD card from the regular camera, and you know if there's any other USB stuff I need to fit, or HDMI, I can just do that right from these ports on the side. So yeah, 
that's the very slim down kit for what I'm using here in Indo. And it's been everything I need. I do have one bigger tripod that I use for, oh, I almost forgot this tripod. This tripod is just, uh, you know, Mark Weens <clears throat> got me into using these because I used to use a Gorilla Pod and I saw him using this and it looked really simple and easy and super light. So I ended up using this Manfrotto for the last few years and it's great. Super tough, very basic, but it stays really solid and gets me pretty much everywhere I need to go. Unless I'm doing a time lapse, I'll use my bigger tripod or my, you know, using this big lens, you, you need kind of a bigger tripod to keep it stable. But that's the basic kit. I'm sure there's some stuff I'm forgetting, but if you want to check the links below, like I said, all the Amazon store links are there. It's the cheapest price that I have found and you do me a favor if you end up buying that way, great. Or if you can support an independent camera store or independent retailer or whatever, I would recommend doing that first. But if you go Amazon, I would appreciate it if you use those links. So uh, any questions on gear, feel free to put them down below. And there's some other videos I wanted to do because I do get questions about, you know, my, my favorite travel items or essentials that I travel with. And there is some kind of unique things that I do travel with that I think people would like to see. So stay tuned for a video like that. But yeah, any questions, hit them up below. Bless up. Thanks for watching and plenty of new content coming soon on Raf's Kitchen and my other channel, Earthly Eats. I just shot a ton of good stuff here in Indonesia. So please do check back on that. Links are below. Cheers.